Okay, good morning, gamers. We are back today playing some more of the Grixis Shadow list featuring Underworld Breach that we played yesterday. And we have a chest cold open. What is going on on all you critical spikelings? I am your, hold on, look at my thing covering host, I think. Host of the best part of 2022. Hope of the, sorry, I just can't see the, okay, your host, the best part of 2022. There's a little like arrow covering that part of the text. 2020, and your only hope for 2023 is Spike Spike will cut to my Shark Typhoon today and stuff, and we're going to continue our end of year jamboree with some Grixis Breach Shadow and Modern, and if you all behave yourselves, I might even add it a Nickel Bolas for flavor. Oh, that's a great, a great deep cut. So stay tuned to see if that happens, and support the stream with the like, sub, follow bits, and a purchase from the Spike Link store. Okay, um, so we played the sec yesterday. We were 10-0 and 0 for back-to-back -back trophies on stream. Very, very hype, very, very exciting. This is, you know... Grixis Shadow <laughs> with Underworld Breach. It's not too much deeper than that. Uh, basically, we've cut the... Like, somewhat stock Grixis Shadow is like... So, a lot of us played 19 lands. I basically always play 18. Um, the removal spell split is always a conversation. I think that I, th I do think you should play four Lightning Bolts with the three Breaches. But I think that these flex spots can be a little bit up in the air. I do think that there's really not a lot of room for the main deck spell pierces that you like sometimes commonly see in this archetype. Because um, I, I, I do think that like the s seven removal spells are pretty mandatory right now. I think that the four drowns are pretty mandatory. And I think that the three Breaches are really good. So I have all the spell pierces in the sideboard. Um... But the deck has been just just phenomenally good. And just to like reiterate the main point here, like what is good about Underworld Breach in the shell, is that in the same way that Breach is a good prowess card, Pro prowess and shadow are both decks with super, super low mana curves that have an amazing early game. And you can really, really easily put your opponent on the back foot of the game early. And in the mid to late game, Breach is like just the best card advantage spell that you could play where and it's, it can also function as like you know six to nine damage with these lightning bolts just to like close out a game but breach plus channeler plus filling up your graveyard so passively you just get to draw a lot of cards remove re replay threats remove the board it's it's, it's what's, co what's cool about it is that it's whatever you need it can be removal it can be threats it can be card advantage it can be burn it just does all of those things and um it, it just it, and I, i've said this a few times too when something like this happens and it just feels so obvious, it, that those are those are the best things. When it's just like, oh, duh, breach and shadow. Apparently, you know, a lot of people have been trying it <laughs> as I've been posting it. Jesse wrote apparently like three months ago wrote an article saying, hey, we should try breach and shadow. <laughs> um, but yeah, I but but also like shadow has just like not been a part of the metagame for a while now. Like really since the banning of Luris, it just has not been a big part of the metagame. And so I'm definitely interested in trying to to get the word out with this list because I love Shadow. It's one of my favorite archetypes and it's very near and dear to my heart and I'm I'm very excited for this deck. Uh, Truth of the 60 months, Croco with the 10 months. <laughs> Try, trying to get Bobble banned? Maybe. <laughs> I, I, you know, <laughs> Breach is a really broken card too. I, I, maybe it's Breach that <laughs> needs to go. Although I, the card under will Breach a lot more reasonable without Bobble. Bobble would also like nerf, you know, Murktide really hard. Yeah, yeah. So I, I do think that there are <laughs> other shells for this card for for this this idea. I will be working on it. Um, Murktide is really interesting. Where. Breach and Murktide don't play super well together in the current builds. I do think that there are maybe some ways that you can actually, like, be a bit more combo-focused with Murktide and Breach. And we'll be working on that a little bit. Um, okay, Saga Go is probably Titan, which is an okay matchup, but our hand, specific hand is maybe not great against them. Um... I'll be working on it. I I may be like a little lost in the sauce. I also like kind of like likely just need to test regular Murktide with Breach, but I actually saw that um, fellow Twitch streamer Burnt Taco did that. I think yesterday with um, with uh, just playing just playing Breach and Murktide in a prelim. So What's definitely, up? It's me, your friend, aspiring spike. people are clamoring. Thought Scar may be worth it. Yeah, I think I agree. Thought Scar may be worth it. You can play Mana Morphos. There's there's a lot of options, which is exciting, right? When there's whatever there's a lot of directions to go. That's always my favorite time. So I could potentially go Channeler plus Bolt myself plus Shadow this turn. 
Alternatively, I could just go Shredder plus Channeler. Which, I think digging for... A th I, I don't think this Shadow, especially with no Dress Downs at the main deck, I don't really think this Shadow is going to be able to just solo my opponent right now. So I think that the ability to try to dig for a Thoughtseize is going to be more important. Okay, I'll go ahead and discard the Drown. I think that the Drown is not doing a lot at the moment. <laughs> Thank you, Chess. <laughs> Flavor bits. I'm thinking cutting the counter spells could be the way to go. Counter spells pretty good. I I I I actually I think I like the counter spells where you get to just like buy a lot of time until you go off. But could be could be. Again, you have a lot. You have a lot of. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> you have a lot of options. A lot of options. Um. So like so like one thing too is like cutting the Murktide. So like I think cutting Murktide for third path iconoclast and like the blue red the blue red shell is is pretty interesting, but at that that point like is that better than what we're doing here, you know? Um I think I'll discard the bobble. Although my opponent can can just kill me this turn if they have a Titan. Is Murktide the best for counter spell deck? Um Really, the only decks at the moment that are popular <coughs> and play four counter spells. So I've been a little congested today. The only decks that are really popular and play four counter spells are um, <coughs> Control and Murktide. Uh, <coughs> sorry, I wasn't really coughing this morning. I just woke up with like a little bit of a stuffy nose. Uh, I just keep trying to talk over the cough instead of letting it go. Apologize. Um, I think I think control is a little underrated at the moment. I think control is a a good and slightly underrated deck. Um, I think that Murktide is is probably the better of the two at the moment, but. Counterspell is a really good card. <laughs> Counterspell is a really good card. Yeah, I don't think I saw Seth's version for Modern Paladin. I, th I saw his, uh, like, historic version for the Acer Act combo deck, but glad you liked them. Does my opponent have two Titans here? Doug with the five pack. Thank you, thank you. Hope you're doing well today. They also have two Summoner's packs, because they... Yeah. Well, uh, that'll, that'll do it for me. <laughs> That'll do it for me. Okay, so we're gonna bring in the Dress Downs and the Terminates and the Alpine Moons. I'm gonna cut all four copies of Lightning Bolt. I'm gonna cut at least one copy of Drown, likely two copies of Drown, likely one copy of Breach. I sometimes in the past have trimmed the fourth Shadow. We can also trim the fourth Thoughtseize. So it's fourth, uh, fourth, yeah, so fourth uh, iteration. He'll trim the fourth iteration. Merry Christmas to you too, Doug. Thank you, thank you. If you got a gift from Doug, make sure to thank him. Yeah, Amulet Unplayable, by the way. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing that all the Titan players in the Titan Discord declare Titan to be unplayable and bad. Does a Ragavan get wrecked by Grazer? Uh, yeah, if they don't have Grazer, Ragavan is great against them, though. It's, it's kind of a polarizing card of the matchup, but... If they don't have Grazer, Ragavan is great. If they do have Grazer, sometimes you can kill the Grazer. <laughs> um, sometimes your opponent one for one Z is okay. No lands. Hand does have lands. This hand is also a turn to Death Shadow, which is pretty good. I think that I put back the Ledger Shredder since I seem to be doing all right on the number of threats here. Asking for a friend, is Grixia Shadow back or is this Copium? <laughs> Can you print a card to replace Drown? Card to replace Drown. Drown's really good. Um, I was 10 and 0 on stream with the deck yesterday, so of course I'm going to say that I'm uh, optimistic that the deck is uh, capable of making a return. 
it is also true that like the the modern format is generally pretty open and you can kind of play whatever you want and you can have a hot streak with almost anything and so one really hot streak that we had yesterday is not uh like locked in that the deck is back to tier one status okay now i wish i put back to the drown um but i like i like the deck i was happy with it yesterday excited to see how it evolves hmm I think I'm graveyarding. It's closer. One more time for Delirium. Wow, my opponent's hand is pretty Thoughtseize resilient. I'm actually surprised to see that my opponent did not play Amulet on turn one. Usually you want to play Amulet on turn one. I just found Drown to be a mopey card as all. Well, I I Drown is very versatile, kind of spell removal spell. I like it a lot, but hard to argue with mopey. Okay, not a bad draw, just actually turning this Death Shadow into some real pressure. I think if I draw a Dress Down, my opponent's... I have a Lethal here next turn. Yeah, you can play Counter Spell, you can play Spell Pierces. You can play whatever you want. Another Saga. So if they make a Saga token to block, and I drown the token, then I do get Delirium on my channeler. My opponent does not do so, though, which is fine. They may have that situation read. Saga does put a second card type in the yard, which is not... The, the two types in the yard is not, like, a super-duper relevant number. Um, I can counter another amulet if they... So assuming they put an amulet into play this turn, I can counter one. And right now they should only have five mana this turn. So there's a solid chance I'm going to be able to, like, kill this construct, um, surveil into a way to grow the shadow, kill, the, uh, kill another construct, and then present lethal. So any any non basic land, Thought Seas, Alpine Moon, Drown, uh, Dress Down, are all cards I would keep on top here. And then if I don't see those cards, I think I do upkeep Surveil. Okay, not gonna keep the breach. Let's go ahead and upkeep Surveil since some. Um, we have plenty of one mana cards to get the job done. Oh wait, is this exactly nine? Oh, this is a nine anyway. Sorry, I thought I was one short. Martoni, think of the nine months. Appreciate you. On the draw, it is true, Drown is like a little bit harder to get advantage of. Maybe play one bolt over Drown 3. This is one of the worst matchups for Drown, I will say. Um, I think we have to mulligan this hand. Like, all shock lands, no fetch lands with shadows, kind of awkward. This hand's just a little too slow. I do like this one. I love that this is a turn 2 death shadow. Um, I would actually like love to keep this lightning bolt to grow our shadows, but the terminate is maybe just more important. I think that that's likely true. But here I get to go turn one thought seize, turn two two shadows, and hopefully we could draw you know another fetch land. Thankfully they haven't had. Oh, I guess they they did have an animal in the hand game one, but they they had they did have to draw it. It wasn't in their opener. They haven't had turned one amulet yet. Interesting. So are they gonna I guess they're gonna bounce their saga next turn? They might play nothing. Huh. This is a hard decision point. So on turn three, let's say that they draw a non saga land. Or not bounce land. They play the bounce land, then they get to go float a colorless, get a amulet into play. Uh, two mana grazer is going to be effectively plus one mana. So I think they'll be one short of playing a titan that turn. 
taking taking just taking Titan is maybe just the best play. Um, it's possible we can just play around Dismember two, but it's also like probably fine just to trade one of our two shadows for their one Dismember. Why four Pierce and zero fluster because of invasive? Well, I wouldn't be able to counter um, Ren and six to fairy leyline binding fable of the mirror breaker. Chalice of the Void, Rest in Peace against Blue White and Creativity. Um, Flusterstorm, obviously, like, a little bit better against Cascade. Cascade, not a matchup that I feel horrible in. Um, this is interesting. The Shadows are just going to be really large, really in charge. I think that... Baiting the Dismember with the Shredder is probably correct here. Wow, they just didn't cast it. Do you think it's always correct to leave one bolt in the main post port? Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, it's it's like, in modern, there's like very rarely always correct situations. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there, there's very rarely always correct decisions. But there are often correct decisions. Okay, so their hand is Terminate, Basic Forest, Endurance, Mystery Card. Sorry, Dismember, not Terminate. Well, let me get a Connive off. Sorry if you've already covered this, but what made you decide to get Croak? So, well, I feel like that's probably, you know somewhat clear that I the decision to cut Croaks is to so I can include Underworld Breach since those both cards uh both these cards compete for graveyard use don't think you really want to play both together although we did yesterday we were having a conversation and as it turns out um as it turns out uh <laughs> If you have a Croaks in the yard you cast Breach you could escape Croaks for two mana and only three cards in the yard and that's kind of a funny, interesting uh, situation. Okay, so another growth chamber, forest, endurance. And this was the other draw? I, I, for, I think last time I said their hand, I, I forgot the second growth chamber, but I think we have their, their hand just pegged. So I'm missing something. Or did this this or this force went back into play with the Grazer, so there still is a mystery card. Um I do think I'm supposed to be pushing my advantage a little bit here. Maybe 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 not. What I meant by that is like terminating this endurance. But no, I think that's actually just not the play. <coughs> I think it's actually just not the play. Um this is kind of a free attack, but I'll just let the endurance hit. I think keeping the terminate up keeps me just very um, resilient to a prime time. Obviously, I could terminate, grow the shredder, maybe he gets through the grazer if I find a spell. I think if they don't have the amulet you're terminating, I think that that's probably a fine, um, fine line. The Grazer does like complicate things, of course, as it always does. So they are going to be able to tighten some. Thankful I helped with the Terminate. Um, the Shredders may grow, which is going to be helpful as well. <coughs> they got a Grazer. They got a Grazer. So their hand is Grazer Mystery Card right now, which just has to be a Titan. Or another Summoner's Pact. Why would they get Grazer here ever? I feel like I'm missing something. And then they cast Titan. Colossus? They only have one land in their hand. They can't be Colossus. Misclick trying to get Azusa? Yeah, I mean, yeah, even Azusa would be better. I don't know. Could be Misclick is maybe, like, just the most likely. But, like, I, I also don't know why you would, um, like, 
why you would cast Pack for Dryad before casting the Titan, because this you just let me connive twice with two mana up. So you get Vesuva, copying Hand of War Battle Bins so they can untap it. Yeah, this seems like a mistake. They block Shredder though. They're not even going to be able to play it this turn. Yeah, they've just messed up. So I guess I'm one card of the yard short of Breach plus second spell. It's a little unfortunate. They did endurance me this game. Uh, this is a bad block too, right? Or no, so th these are both two fours. I thought this was a three four. Okay. Um Points out to four life. Let me go ahead and put this Gigant in my hand. I guess maybe I wasn't supposed to attack with the Shredders. But with my opponent having to pay for Summoner's Pact, I think we'll be okay here. Their hand is also just, just Grazer Bounce Lands. So they, they even still need to top deck something potentially next turn. Since they're, they're one mana short of uh, tightening me this turn. And then that that is the one unknown card, right? Gruel Turf, because their hand should be Growth Chamber Grazer right now. <laughs> hey headband, good to see you in chat. They're playing the Grazer. Uh, maybe I've misread the situation. Okay, so they picked up Vesuva. I don't think Vesuva really gets to change anything for them. They copy they copy Valakit, sure, so a Dryad will be pretty scary, potentially pretty lethal. An interest, so attack with the chip plans to go chump block. If I draw a fetch land, if I draw a bobble, if I draw a dragon rage channeler, I guess not channeler, I can't channeler doesn't let me go breach bolt. But I have a, I have a lot of outs here to just win the game. Drown. Iteration, well, um, iteration into any spell should, well, sorry, not any spell. These are, I thought these were gonna be, these are one bigger. We can go now, just drown a Grazer win. Weird game. I um, think we maybe would have been on the losing side here if my opponent had played differently. Channeler does let you breach her because of surveil. It doesn't because I have I'm one. I'm two. I have too few mana because I can go Channeler, breach, and then I have one mana short. Right. But I post this, how I lost versus you. <laughs> uh, I could tell that it was probably like the pact for Grazer, but probably a little bit, a little bit of a BM to do so. <laughs> Is this the Tin of Deck? Doesn't look as doesn't look as strong. Uh, Amulet Titan's kind of a weird matchup to like pop in and evaluate any deck to be honest. But this is the eleven and no deck. A Dricky, twenty six months. Thank you. I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna go Channeler Bobble turn one to try to find. Uh, land for Ragavan thoughts he's next turn. Missed on our first look at land. Get two more. Can we start playing Breach of non red decks? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not hard to splash for. We'll see. I like. I am definitely interested in exploring Breach and more fair strategies. Uh, -oh, we're playing against Jund. Sorry, Dredge, Dredge. This Dark Blast is pretty good against my Ragavan, huh? I get to take their Thrilling Discovery. And then I need to think, am I ever committing Ragavan into... Okay, let's, let's draw that Underworld Breach. Uh, Dredge is going to be a tough, tough matchup. I ended up cutting the Hearses yesterday since they had tension with the... Um, the drowns and tensions with the. What are they doing? They're playing just casting Narcomoeba. Tensions with the uh, breaches too. <clears throat> Spare priest will be good. We'll see. We'll see. I, I, this is like probably the worst matchup, and that's okay. 
Um, I could play Ragavan and then drown the the Dark Blast. And then they get to go upkeep Dark Blast, dredge three, one, two, three, seven cards in the yard, which is one short of being able to escape Ox of Agonis. But if I want to kill Narcomoeba, then I'll let them that then that lets them escape Ox of Agonis. Oh, my opponent might upkeep they might just kill their own Narcomoeba. Yeah, I think that they're likely enough to kill their own Narcomoeba that I'm just gonna do this. Okay, so let's go hand, shredder, bottom, exile. <clears throat> then pass back. What are needles for? Uh, Yogmoth and Breach combo mostly, but also any Ren and Six deck will bring them in. Um, mostly those two. Oh, sorry, I just I don't know how I missed they just had Stinky Dump in their yard. Okay, never mind. Would Mono Red benefit from Breach? I mean, Prowess with Breach is already a really good deck. That's already a, a really good deck. Um, you can play it as Mono Red. We've trophied with that, I, I think, last season. Um, you can play it as... Uh, is it is, I think, the better of the two variants, though. Drown seems bad against the most popular deck, Murktide. It's just not. It's, people say this all the time, but it's like... Uh, it has a hard time killing exactly the card Murktide, but it is almost always a two-mana one-for-one uh, outside of that... that you know, outside of, uh, against exactly Murktide. And sometimes it kills Murktide too. <laughs> but this is, it's, I don't know, it's also, it's also kind of a funny comment, Drown seems bad against Murktide, where, like, the, the Murktide versus Shadow matchup is just an old matchup that has been, like, played a lot, you know. That's just not really my experience with it, at least. All right, let's, ooh, Shadow's interesting. Let's go Shredder, Shadow, Ragavan, the Dark Blast, the Ragavan, Block, Block, Super dead. Maybe if we draw a second shadow off of the connive. Alright, pretty sure we're dead. Can we play two mana one for ones in modern? What is this previous ones? Yes, you counterspell is super playable. And Terminate is super. Tur Terminate is like so good in modern when it wasn't even that good versus uh, a pre image one. <laughs> two mana one for ones are fine. Uh, okay, I think I go, I go to exactly one if they swing with everything. Maybe they'll just pond here. Nope, that didn't conflagrate. Okay, so bring in the spell pierces, the invasive surgery. Um, cutting the unholy heats, cutting the terminate. Trimming down two thoughtsies, probably. I've been discussed Street Wraith in this deck. Obviously, a great addition, but the slots seem too tight. I, I, I don't think it's obviously a great addition. I think it's the kind of addition that, like, seems. Maybe seems obvious as a great addition. I have play tested uh, Shadow with four Street Wraith, zero Bobble, four Bobble, four Street Wraith, four Bobble, zero Street Wraith. Uh, Bobble is by far the better zero mana cantrip. When you have eight zero mana cantrips in your deck, um, you can, it, mulliganing is so difficult. It's so difficult to mulligan hands and have like Bobble, Street Wraith, Street Wraith, Street Wraith, Bobble, Bobble. It's like a lot of times you like you just don't know if this hand does anything. Uh, additionally, like one huge difference, and I, I, this is something this is something I have to say a lot. Um, no counter spells in this hand is pretty rough. I think I need to mulligan and find like the ability to counter their turn two uh, delve card. This hand's pretty good though. Um, I think I'll put back the ledger shredder since it'll be hard to tap out for that on turn two. So so like. Um, another thing is, like, pe people, older Magic players, are used to the Death Shadows deck being, like, completely built around Death Shadow, and they're used to Death Shadow being a deck that is just about getting a Shadow in play as quickly as possible and killing your opponent with as quickly as possible. That is not what this deck is. This deck is a Grixis tempo strategy that in uh, where one of your 16 threats is Death Shadow. Um, Death Shadow is about as good as Channeler and Ragavan and Ledger Shredder. It does th it does different things. It does some things better and does th and some things worse. But it is not actually like the best threat in your deck. Um, okay, I'm gonna just go shock this in. 
and that 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 is that is the big difference. That is the big difference. Is that this is um, well they hit Narcan but Malcolm grows, and so like because of that the card street wraith also like loses loses equity too, where like you're not playing scourge of the skyclaves. You know you're you're just not all in. Could two breach be enough? It could be. Um, I've definitely been so like this is also you know a very classic and you know pretty good problem to have where I I have I'm currently eleven and zero with the deck. I'm probably going to pick up my first loss right now, but I'm currently eleven and zero with the deck. And when you're eleven and zero with something, it's just it can be difficult to figure out what changes need to be made. But there there's a chance you want to play only two breaches. But I've been happy with three so far, obviously because I haven't been losing. Is Scourge even playable anymore? Um, I I think I trophied with Scourge. You know, it was a while ago, but I, I have trophied with Scourge and um, it is it is uh not as good as it used to be, but it is I would say somewhat playable. So Dark Blast to get a Dredger in the yard. They find Otherworldly Gaze, which is actually really big for them. So I guess they're going to plan on blocking and dark blasting, or maybe just flashing back otherworldly gaze. Yeah, so if I attack, they get to block dark blast. Guess I'm playing my ledger shredder. Hopefully we can connive a bit. Surprise chat even mentioned bitter reunion. We love that card, don't we? Oh, has it mentioned? Yeah, I know. Chat is just so addicted to bitter reunion. It's crazy. So I don't like that they're flashing back this otherworldly gaze right now because if they hit a creeping chill, all of a sudden I get a good, I have a good attack. They put they put two cathartic reunions in the graveyard. I am kind of fuming that they've done that. This is like not reasonable behavior at all, unless somehow you knew I had invasive surgery in my hand. You, like even if you were gonna play around a counter spell, you would just put you would just keep both of these on top of your library. You would just keep both of these on top of your library, get one of them countered, and then I don't I don't know I don't know opponent is streaming. I, mean, I guess that's more likely. Do they know about the invasive surgery somehow? I just don't know what I'm missing. Like how do you not keep both cathartic reunions on top here? I think I'm telling vision. Okay, okay. So like, just just somebody help me make it make sense. I, has someone help me make it make sense? If I'm casting otherworldly gaze there, I'm looking for a cathartic reunion effect. If my opponent has a counter spell, I'm actually really happy because I have two cathartic reunions on top. I could get this first one countered, then cast another one again the next turn. Why? Why are we not? Why are we not keeping both on top? They have both reunions in the yard before the gaze. If that's the case, I'm totally missing. I thought. Oh, they milled it off the dark blast. Okay. Sorry, I thought they milled him off the other world of the gaze. Okay, then, then that's what's happening. I'm just trying to make it make sense, you know. And that makes sense. I'm just dumb. I'm sorry. Just dumb. Yeah, they kept them all on top with the other world of the gaze. Uh, alright, that'll probably kill me. <laughs> Damn it. Hello, Axor. Thank you for the 40 bucks. Thank you. Yeah, the sign is great. Jump block with the Narc Amoeba. We do get Delirium on the Channeler. We get two draws. I guess we can still draw a Spell Pierce. Maybe I could have connived away... Differently, I don't know.
Why not discard the land? Getting the counter on the Shredder is really important so it can block Amalgam. And I'm also thinking that my opponent doesn't have one of these in their hand because they didn't cast one last turn or like the previous turns. Like in Dredge, you just have to jam these. And then we discovered like I was just dominant furters and I these were not milled over. Um, and so with that, <coughs> with that being the case, um, I think not milling over the land is correct. That being said, uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm very, very dead here. Or very likely dead here. Yeah, just very classic modern, not playing graveyard hate, good paired against strategy, lose, it is what it is. So I, I really need to find a drown for this Ox of Agonis, so I think I need to... Probably loot away the Ragavan. I guess if I find a removal spell for Amalgam, this is going to be... <laughs> Hmm. 14, 17 damage. So I could keep the iteration on top and look for... Just, yeah, use the iteration to dig for another bolt. I think that that's probably going to be my best bet. And then I could maybe find, like, Black's, like, Swamp. Uh, or Fetch Land for Swamp plus... Um, Drown for the ox would also be an out, but oh wow. Well, we found <laughs> swamp anyways, but I think we they have dark blast. If they tap dark blast, they take a damage, so it's not a problem actually. Assuming I can count to 17. Lucky, lucky. So maybe I'm gonna go seeing that game. Maybe just like kill block again with my <laughs> shadows is the plan. So let me go and end these heats and hope. I like thoughts. I think with five one mana counter spells, you don't really want the thought seasons so badly. Why two thing? You know, I'm like you know doing something that no modern player has ever done before, like respecting Yogmoth in my sideboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, but it comes in against Yogmoth, Breach, it, Tron, uh, any Renin Six deck. It's it's a it's a cyber card I'm liking a lot at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna mulligan this, and I think we have to keep this on six and feel pretty bad about it. I I will say that like Breach Breach plus Channeler is potentially a plan in this matchup. We draw, maybe we'll just draw Blue Source off the top. Nope. Be pretty hard to be dredged twice fairly, you know. I've been playing Desho, or Desho was my favorite deck at Martyr. I've been playing Prowse until the last couple months of winning. This is like the best of both worlds. I would say that that's a probably. It, it, it's probably a somewhat fair assessment to say that this is a blend of those two strategies, yeah. Maybe we were supposed to go to five. I don't know. It's just very hard to, to like, fairly be dredged on a mold of five, too. This deck did have a plan. So here they get a Silver Smoke Ghoul, two prized amalgams. And I didn't draw land. I concede. And our record becomes an embarrassing 11 and 1. Channeler, this sounds sick. Channeler double breach. Yeah, backup deck time. Soria, love it thank you. Usually a Black Cleave Cliff's pause is getting scammed on turn one. <laughs> uh, I will say that I feel like Rick's Shadow usually had a pretty solid scam matchup in my memory. It's been a while, obviously. 
That may be magical. Oh, he has a uh, trophy challenge to win for me. Take bolts. I see them taking any of my cards here. Breach and oh, totally reasonable choice here. <laughs> um. Let's bolt the grieve since. Waiting on it. Like, if I if I thought sees them here and I see they have an Undying card in their hand, then all of a sudden I have to thought sees the Undying effect instead of just a better card, like a Blood Moon. Good top deck, though. Okay, Graveyard this for Delirium. Well, I guess I'd probably Graveyard anyways, since I didn't get a Water Graveyard to get a Steam Vents. And then uh, top deck, the best card. Best card on top. <clears throat> Nice that if they, I guess, no, sorry, if they scam Fury, they can, <laughs> they can kill both channelers. So that would be a reason to thought seize, is to break that up. But it's not super common that they can scam Grief turn one, then scam Fury turn two, but happens sometimes, obviously. Plays Black Leaf Cliffs. Let me cast this iteration before maybe my opponent decides to terminate a uh, channeler and I miss a surveil. I will keep this thought this uh Bloodstain Mire on top. Getting a swamp and casting thoughts is a priority for me here. And then I think I will hand the shadow. Although now that I have handed shadow, maybe I want to get a watery grave. I think that makes sense. Grave rid of this thought sees. Um, I don't hate a bobble. Yeah, we could maybe try to surveil into like a instant speed interactive spell. Okay, pretty easy spiral grab there. I grave that looking for breach. Well, the bobble helps you look for the breach. Like, what do we do if our top card is just like a land or a thoughtsies here? You know what I mean? And this can also dig us for instant speed interaction. This is this is basically zero mana scry two draw card, which when you think about it that like that, and when you're in this like top deck situation, you're pretty happy with it. Uh knowing my opponent has Turok, I'm gonna wait on the bobble crack though. Nice scam. Okay. Let's go to game two. No upkeep, stop bobble in this deck. Um, they had a fetch land in play, I thought, so I, I didn't want to crack the bobble and let them just fetch and let me lose the info. I wanted them to like, kick Turok or play Turok and then f bobble end of turn. I think I might just be in Pierce over Thoughtseize. So I like being able to reactively counter Blood Moon. Um, I like, the, I guess being both are pretty bad top decks. It's also, it also helps me hedge against Hidden Sugu, Consumes All, and the Licensed Hearse. Uh, I could bring in a Needle for hers. So I don't love bringing a Needle against the Hidden Sugu, Consumes All deck. Although, me being in on Breach, I probably need to hedge against the Graveyard Hate a bit more than I have in the past. Um, I can also get the Terminate, probably. I think Drown does a good enough Terminate job in this matchup that that's fine to cut. And we can click Submit. Awesome, Kale. Awesome. Yeah, I think the Merc Time matchup's likely to be close, just like it always has been, you know. Just like it always has been. All right, great hand. Basic swamp may be a consideration for Thoughtseize over his peers. Um, I think casting Thoughtseize after Blood Moon comes down is not, you know, super duper relevant, but it, it, it's a small element, I suppose. Any consideration to trim some of the Death Shadow when you set out Thoughtseize? I don't think so. I think that this is a matchup that you know, your opponent's attacking you, and it goes kind of long, and they have, like, damage base removal and fury, and so this being bigger than, like, you know, something they can fury is really valuable. You know, dodges their bulls, dodges their furies. Is there a reason you moved away from EE sideboard? Um, Lolurus banning is, like, way worse for explosives. Obviously, you can still play sub number. 
Um, we still have a lot of cyborg cards for Hammer with three Dress Down, two Moon, and the Terminates. Dress Down is your Sanctifier hate, so you don't need explosives as much for Sanctifier hate. But who kept the one lender? Seems that they did. You drew a pretty good card. Not a bad card either. I might discard it though. Have you considered playing Fables? Do not play Fable in Grixis Shadow, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> I'm begging. Grixis Shadow is a deck that is all about mana efficiency. It's all about mana efficiency. And that's why Breach is good. It's because your deck is just so low to the ground and it comes down and is so flexible. It can be more threats, burn, removal, cards. But um, F Fable is not a good card in this deck, I promise. Like, yeah, just in general, like, three mana. I, I know the Breach is, like, more than three mana, so it's a bit different, but it can, it can just be two mana sometimes. Um, but that is just really weird, not where you want to be. Ooh, they don't even have a scam card. Okay, so let's go Channel or Bolt Hold of Spell Pierce. I'll keep one of these on top, I suppose. Yeah, the difference with Breach is that it's broken. It's honestly, it's, it's honestly like not that much deeper than that. It's Breach is just like a broken, overpowered card that fits well in the archetypes we're playing it. The sequencing says odd. Well, they, they did say it's their first ever Modern League, so... Yeah, we can go easy on them. They they should know about this, thought, this Spell Pierce, so... I think they, they started to play into it, realized I had Spell Pierce up, and then stopped playing into it. So I'm gonna attack for three, and then I'm gonna get another Steam Vents, and then I'm gonna uh, play the Shadow off the Watery Grave, and then if my opponent has Bolt or Fury, and they're not gonna have it this turn, probably, but next turn, uh, I can Bolt myself to protect the Shadow. Might just Bolt myself, but Bolt myself anyways. Where's my Alta Chalcid one? Right here. Right here. Right here. <laughs> Uh, Chalcedon 1 is also, like, incredibly uncommon at the moment. There's some decks that play against it, but, um, you just, like, if, if, if I felt like, if I felt like, uh, Chalcedon 1 was more popular, I would be playing, like, more answers to it. I just, you know, have, blue-white control is very, very rare at the moment, and, um, even blue-white control is not always playing... Uh, this doesn't actually increase the clock, so I'm gonna graveyard it. Blue-white control is not always playing that card, and... Uh, we played against Eldrazi Tron yesterday, did we beat them, but that matchup's really hard, even if you have a thousand answers to Chalice, that matchup's still really hard. How's this deck's matchup for Prison Tron? Uh, I mean, probably abysmal, horrible, like as bad as you could imagine. Not that bad. <laughs> I don't know. Moon wasn't even that bad there. I mean, no, but I'm gonna spell pierce it still. Yeah, there is the all-access pass for the uh, Super Qualifier week this week, but um, ends, like, I think December or January 4th. Have I considered ex Surgical for the side? Uh, I have considered Surgical for the side. You can play that over the second Needle. Um, I, think it, I think Surgical is a little bit of an underrated card. Okay, so it looks like we're playing against Goblins here. An interesting matchup. Breach Burn win. I mean, I think that Breach is, like, much, much better in Prowess than it is in Burn. Um, 
if if fire blast was legal in the format we would be playing breach burn though oh goblin crater maker goblin crater maker is basically bitter reunion <laughs> and how much people love this card for how mid it is the the ratio of like community love to middenness <laughs> Gonna cast the Ragavan. Goblin Crater Maker is a great draft card. Is it? maybe I don't know. So they must have just drawn that because they didn't violet it in. I think I'm just gonna get tap land here. I think with the iteration we'll be able to lower our life total if we need to. Don't be a hater maker. I mean, I like I like Goblin Crater Maker as like you know, a nerd who likes cards. As much as the next player. Um, <laughs> that's about it. But bitter, bitter reunion too. People just like they love bitter reunion. Bitter reunion is like the biggest hit of this year, maybe. All right, uh, I'm gonna not play around my opponent combo killing me right now. Um, famous last words. I maybe, but let's get value off our iteration and hope for the best. It says, shout out to my boy Callum, your biggest fan. Shout out to Callum. All it takes is killing an Ugo the Crater Breaker and you're hooked for life. I know, I know, I know. People go, that's exactly what they, this can kill Emrakul, it can kill Ugin. You know what else it can do? Not a lot. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> Seems like a bad matchup. Yeah, I th I'd say Goblins is favorable, but like this is always like the great thing about playing Grixis Shadow is it feels like a bad matchup a lot of the time, but you're just Grixis Shadow and your curve is really low and all your cards are really good and it's like you're just like gonna be fine a lot of the time. Okay, cast Matron instead of Violing it in. How about no hit run practice going? I've honestly I've had to take a little bit of a break since. There's this dumb Christmas and everything. Um, but I'm going to be getting back into it tonight. Alright, we'll just trade Ragavan for Matron. Obviously not a super good feeling play. I think I played Iteration and then likely a Shredder. I know I'm not getting my... Ooh. Breach is great here. Breach gives me like a pretty like solid burn game plan. Oh, they have Mons? <coughs> Mons is really good here. I do think about the swamp isn't a bit problematic since it'll make most iterations pretty complicated. I feel great about the swamp, I feel great about the mountain. I don't know, it's like, Swamp, sw just, just like, have Painless Lands to fetch four in your Death Shadow deck. Like, like, you, you, the Death Shadow is a deck about life total management, and it's a lot harder. They hit four cards, they hit Matron, Sting Scourger, Harbinger, Snoop. But again, Go Goblins is a deck about, um, life total management, and it is much harder to manage your life total when you, <laughs> um... <laughs> It is much harder to manage your life total when you don't have painless lands to fetch for. Okay, so I think I'm going to go get a basic mountain. Cast a ledger shredder. Heat on mons. Discard thoughts, he's probably. Now, I really want to bolt my opponent. I think I need to bolt the Snoop instead. They played the Sting Scourger. They played their Snoop. Their hand is Matron Harbinger. Mystery Carb. Um, I think I might wait to bolt the Snoop until after they cast Harbinger. This is not something I usually do, wait to kill the Snoop. What's cool about this line is that... Um, I could potentially just burn my opponent out, bolt them down to 12, then go uh, Breach Bolt Bolt if um, if they don't go for the combo. And then if they do go for the combo, I get to waste three mana on their side. So I think it's kind of a win-win. 
I'm super dead, not gonna lie. I, I feel moderately dead, I guess. I don't feel super dead at the moment. So, casting Bogart Harbinger. I think I bolt the Snoop now so they, it, they don't just pass. They violin Kiki in response. Well, I mean, good beats never play around this ever. Kiki being like the the literally the one unknown card. How's Jessica Breach special? I think it's favorable. Um, I think it's it's pretty favorable. It's obviously like still Jessica Breach, and they're a good deck, and they could win. But you have you have like even like good sideboard cards against them. Okay, needles just downs. Let them show second Kiki. Uh, they, yeah, should maybe let them show second Kiki. They they basically always play second Kiki though. We know their exact hand, so it's it's kind of it's probably a little bit of a waste of time. Okay, I want to leave in all the breaches. I'm gonna cut all the ragavans. They're a Mog War Marshal, uh, munitions experts. Uh, Whatever the one one mana <laughs> one mana ping a goblin is. I get you on the panels part, especially the mountain, but for the most time you get swamp you can't cast iteration. Well I mean the mountain is the same because the mountain doesn't cast drown. So like you, you both of these don't cast a multicolor card. But it's it's like it's it's just fine. Like these are the only cards in the deck. Like mountain is the only card that doesn't cast drown. Swamp is the only card that doesn't cast iteration. It's just okay. It'll be a little awkward sometimes, but there's no three mana plus mana base in the format that doesn't have awkward mana sometimes. You know, it's just okay. And so, and it's also just like, you know, and, and then like Island Island is a terrible, terrible card in a deck with 18 red and what red and black one mana spells. Like you can't ever if you have Island, you can't go red or red or black one drop into red or black one drop. Um, and it's just. And so, like in my opinion, the 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 ability to have a painless fetch target is more relevant than uh, having the off color basic naturally drawn with your two drop and not another land. Sometimes, um, obviously, that does matter, but it's just not it, it's just not going to be perfect either way. And I I, th it, I think you know from what I've gathered from the last couple days of chatting with Grixis Death Shadow players again is that Grixis Shadow players have a tendency to overthink everything and want to just have an answer for everything at all times and you know you just can't have an answer for everything at all times um i don't like keeping this four lander but i also don't love mulliganing <laughs> so i'm gonna keep beetle uh 10 months ago thank you this year with breach of the deck the extra lands can go to use hmm Not really that scared of this Blood Moon. I have a Swamp, and this could easily be a Giganta game. I'll take the Vial. Could also draw another Thoughtseize. Would I play a Red Black Horizon Land? I don't think I would play any Horizon Lands. Um, I'm currently not playing any Horizon Lands. Right, let's dress down that. I know it's just one goblin, but obviously one goblin can add up. Shredder's not too bad. Next turn I'll likely just use to get grab Giganta and use that as my you know blood moon out. Um Interesting. So let me actually discard Heat, and then I'm going to shock in the Steam Vents. So this way I can play Shadow next turn as a 3-3. And with Blood Moon in play, it's kind of tough to deal yourself damage for Shadow. Might end up bolting myself. Probably not too aggressively, though. Did I see your Crooks because of the Synergy with Breach? Um, yeah, we talked about the Synergy Crooks has with Breach yesterday. Um, you, it's maybe correct because of that to play one Crooks or two Breach or something like that. Um, that being said... I think Breach is the better card that uses your graveyard. I think you don't want to be overloaded on cards that, you know, use your graveyard in this in this archetype and I don't think it's super duper deep, you know. Um, I mean I don't currently really even need Need the answer to Blood Moon, so maybe we'll just do this this turn. 
Uh, yes, please. So I guess at this point I'm discarding the shadow, despite the shadow being pretty good. Maybe I play it again next turn off the breach or something. We'll just take the Mons. Can maybe take the Matron. The Matron is so slow, though. So slow. Like, I might just be killing them next turn. I get to bolt them down to 13. Attack them for 7. I guess, yeah, I, I could just go Breach, Bobble, Bolt, Bolt. If, so if I can surveil a spell to the top, we should get them. Yeah, you get a discount on Kroxa, so... There, it could be the case that there's, like, an interesting... Um, an interesting like red black red black shadow or not shadow but like a red black breach deck that's like playing Kroxa and like filling up your graveyard really aggressively I guess the problem with being straight red black is that you are weaker to graveyard hate so maybe you'd have to be Mardu so you can answer some graveyard hate but um the problem is like outside of Dragon Rage's channeler there's not a super duper good like fair card without artifact synergies that fills up the graveyard, you know. Kroxa has to have escape, not a discount. Kroxa, the Kroxa has to escape. Well, uh, Breach escapes the Kroxa. So it, it it discounts both the cards you need to escape it and the mana you need to escape it. Obviously, you have to also pay two, but the idea is you can do both at the same time. So yeah, so obviously, like, this, it's still four total mana, but in theory, you get to do multiple things, so... There, there is may, there is maybe something there. I, I, I'm a little bit um, skeptical. All right, we have a lethal here with the breach in our hand. Just gonna go ahead and bolt. I will graveyard any card here, uh, even this one that gives my opponent a little bit more sideboard info. Show my opponent that they're dead. I guess I need to make sure I don't get rid of Delirium. Yeah, I, I was just thinking my opponent would concede to the Breach, which is why I was doing it like this. Just, hey, I've got the Bolt. Go to game three, though. I think once these uh, terrible Ragavans get out of the deck, the matchup feels a lot better. We are going to win the last one for Callum. Shout out to Callum. Uh, keep. I don't. I, li I don't like that. I don't have a black fetch for the swamp, but it's okay. They might not blow me this game, obviously, and even if they do, we have Gigantha still. <laughs> That's on a mode of six. Bright with the four months, thank you. How many times we played against Titan? Uh, we played against it first round this morning. I can't remember if we played against it yesterday. Um, our one loss of the day is Dredge. I don't think we played against it yesterday. I think just once time so far. Okay, happy to have the needle in my hand here. I think I'm likely going to needle on turn two. There's my black fetch. So let's go with Steam Vents. Channeler. I mean, yeah, having less heats, not having just out main does matter. We still won anyways. My opponent did also make some mistakes. Maybe we wouldn't have won if they hadn't made those mistakes. I guess we die. I guess we lose. Um, I'm going to Thought Season Needle to try to get Delirium. I guess we lose. Go, Channeler, go! They only have three cards in their hands, so... We'll see how, how well they can recover. Underworld Breach is interesting pick up here. I guess it doesn't really do too much. I'm trying to think if I want to Gigantha this turn. I think I'll Gigantha this turn. I don't think, again, the Drown is not super likely to do much with only one card in that yard. Hmm. <laughs> um, da, 
that's probably not great. Well, Vile and the Chalice into the combo. Good beats, good beats. Good beats. You just prefer to save the time. Godless Shrine. I don't know why I don't, I, I don't know why more people don't play goblins, you know. It's like it's, sometimes it's just impossible to reason with modern players where there's a lot of modern players who like, ah, Modern Horizons 2 kill tribal decks, and then I'm like, oh wait, go goblins and Merfolk are actually like really good decks, especially goblins. You have lots of like good interaction and you're really resilient to removal because you have a lot of card advantage and you have a two card Radiant Flames. You have a two card, three mana, infinite combo, and you're a really good Aether Vile deck. And then you go, hmm, I want to play humans. <laughs> when I said Modern Horizons 2 killed fair decks, I meant it killed humans. Okay, the old Godless Shrine, Radiant Flames, Urza Saga deck. Wishclaw Talisman. What is going on? Thank you, Bashram. We're gonna die. Uh, oh, I should play my fetch land. Because I would get guaranteed delirium, although there's delirium right here. I'm gonna thought seize their freaking radiant flames, though. Their Wurza? They, don't, they literally don't even have red mana. I'm gonna have to take this, though, I think. Dead man, iron blood, thank you, thank you. I'm gifting us some iron blood. Yeah, the 2-2 Radiant Blames Wishclaw Talisman bracket. They drew... Oh, no, we, we need this Watery Grave, sorry. So they play Thopter Foundry. Are they going to Wishclaw for... No, they're not going to Wishclaw for Thopter Foundry right now. So I'm going to, I think... Breach thought sees them bobble as many times as I can. Sacking Wishclaw Talisman for a chump blocker or just a just an artifact. Not sure how many cards I'm gonna get, but I think I'll get a few. Make sure to cast the thought sees. Too bad I don't have the third channeler to go to bobble like, you know, 10 times. But we'll take the Urza. I mean, they don't, they don't even have the blue. I guess they get double blue off the Saga. You escape DRC first. No, I, I don't have enough mana to, to thought seize them. I, I, I need to get that Urza out of the hand. Obviously, I, I could have played the third DRC and then, and then drawn like 20 cards and then died to their combo potentially, which is... Less good than uh, drawing a lot, a bit, a lot of cards and not dying to the combo. I think. <laughs> yeah, worth it too. Worth it for cards. Good enough for them. All right, let's bring in four spell peers. Two Moon, Two Needle, <laughs> Three Dress Down. It's a lot of cards. Um, I do think my opponent's going to have a lot of Graveyard Hate Piss Board, so I think I think trimming a couple of Breaches is fine. I think cutting the Bolts is probably fine, too. If there were Urza, they're mostly just on Urza as their creature, so like, I think just having Drown, Terminate Heats is fine. Maybe Trim a Drown. Um, could see you pretty easily trimming... Fourth Shredder. Maybe we just play three Dress Downs. Cut Fourth Shadow basically always. For Thought Seize, because I don't know what else to trim. <laughs> Leave one Bolt to be able to recur. I think when I'm going down to just one Breach, that doesn't matter very much. Yeah, I know Ragavan can be weak to the Thopters, but we also bring in Needles for the Thopters, and the it's, it's, it's fine, it's fine. The Thopters are really slow, so I don't care that much about them. I 
I have a pretty hand. I'm gonna mulligan though. Put a cave seven. Or one of breach. Um I think I'm gonna get marginally greedy and put back the second Ragavan. Obviously, like if the first Ragavan dies and I don't draw the land, I'm gonna really want it, but um we're on the draw. We have Bobble Fetch Land. If I see a land on top, I'll probably just draw the land. Um, depending on, I guess, what the other card to draw is, and the second Ragavan is definitely a lot worse than the first one. Okay, now I will be getting Steam then, so then going Channeler Bobble. Is Bobble Breach just here to draw Jillian cards and some other synergy? Yeah, the, the Breach is just a value card in this deck. But what's cool is that Breach in the mid to late game can be either, like, you can play two threats in a Bobble, or, you know, you can go, you can use, you could just burn them out with, like, three, two or three Lightning Bolts. You can use removal spells with it. You could draw a bunch of cards with Bobble. It just, it's just a very flexible, good value card. It's like Snapcaster Mage, but, like, actually, like, you're, like, super powerful. Spell Sky pretty good against uh, with this Ragavan. Yeah, I, I'll be um, I'll be moving the Neon Sign up. I just had a like kind of a late night last night, so um, didn't get to move it. All right, we'll be mana efficient here and play the Shredder, especially when we know they have Spell Sky to lock the Ragavan down. I need Snapcaster and Pioneer so we can play it again. I think Snapcaster would be pretty medium in Pioneer. <laughs> it's just like, like Cruise is, is still like the better card advantage engine and it, it plays okay with Cruise, but you just like don't have many good like one and two mana spells to flashback, which you kind of need for Snapcaster to be good. Like, like Snapcaster was good in its first part of its standard life. So like at the first part of its standard life, it had Ponder and Mana Leak and it was like, amazing in that part of its like standard life and then when it was like Innistrad returned to Ravnica it was it was okay it was like somewhat playable but it, it was just it was just not like it was just not like the same caliber of card that it was when it had Ponder Mana League um okay let's put the drown in the hand and then get the get another chain alert in play Spike, would this deck need some enchanted artifact removal? I don't think so. I mean, this is like the kind of comment that you see all the time. Like, Spike, this deck doesn't have enchantment removal. Well, we're Grixis, we can't play enchantment removal. And there's, you know, comments like, you know, oh, like, oh, we're weak to, you know, generally weak to artifact. We have Pithy Needles, we have Dress Downs, we have Alpine Moons, and th this is just not how, I, I just, I just personally never build sideboards like that where I just have like generic, types of cyborg cards. I, here's my enchantment removal, here's my artifact removal, here's my graveyard hate. You have to have like much more focused cyborgs with like specific matchups in mind. And you only get 14 cyborg cards too. They didn't maintain priority. Oh, they were gonna they were supposed to sack the Thopter Foundry I see. Well I was gonna I'm gonna needle the Thopter Foundry I think. I guess then they can like wish call talisman and hmm. Well, me drowning the sword doesn't do too much either. I wish I had one more mana so I could needle this and then drown like the portable hole that they get off the talisman. So maybe I wait a turn. And I just iterate and try to go like Ragavan Shadow this turn. And then next turn, I uh, hope that they don't have Urza plus... I mean, I know they're going to Spell Sky 2 Mystery Cards, but I hope they don't go Urza plus... Um, combo okay thought seeds would go a long way towards helping for that so let's go hand bottom exile um thought sees their thought sees them at the very least we get a spell sky and i'm assuming that i'm assuming that their hand is spell sky thopter foundry or sorry spell sky sword of the meek mystery card wish i had another black source but i you know i just don't Okay, Shadow Spear, Sword of the Meek, Spell Skite. Um, 
Okay, so if I take Sword of the Meek... No, that can't be right. Um, we'll just take this Pulse And then now next turn I can go Wishclaw Talisman, grab Pithing Needle, and um, then they'll probably like Wishclaw Talisman for a Portable Hole, but then I can drown the Portable Hole. And if I draw a land, I can also play a Shadow. Any changes? I did the second Needle over the... Um, um, one of the invasive surgeries, which I think is a change I'm happy with at the time of making this comment. We can keep a swamp. Them top decking counterspell certainly complicates things. I think I have to counter back. And then we'll leave this on top for a big breach turn next turn. Um, same Thopter Foundry. Again, I expect my opponent will tutor up another portable hole, exile the needle, but then they only get two Sword of the Meek activations. And I can have a pretty explosive Underworld Breach turn. This Adventure Sphere has been gaining them a decent amount of life too. Kind of easy to discount, but pretty relevant this game. Is Homeward Path a modern legal card? Just like the land you tap it, gain control of all permanents you own? Because that card would be pretty... Oh, they just concede? Wow. No, yeah, I didn't think so. But boy, that would be a really, really sweet combo with uh, Wishclaw Talisman. Is there anything like that that's as good as Homeward Path? Probably not. Oh, it's just creatures. Okay, never mind. 